I'm Bina Jo, the Chair of the Department of Physiology and Pharmacology at the University of Toledo and the Director of the Center for Hypertension and Precision Medicine. I was also the co-chair today for the session on AI and hypertension and with me is Dr. Joseph Kassab. I let him introduce himself. Hello, thank you. I'm Joseph Kassab. I'm a postdoc research fellow at the Cleveland Clinic at the Heart and Vascular Thoracic Institute. I was very honored to present today our talk on AI and hypertension guidelines, the good and the bad. Thank you for having me. Dr. Kassab, after three talks, I found yours um, very interesting. Could you go through it a little bit for us to know where we are going with the good and the bad parts of ChatGPT? Of course, sure. So in our study, we assessed the accuracy of these publicly available AI models like ChatGPT 3.5, ChatGPT 4, etc., etc., to provide accurate patient, patient facing recommendation on the management of hypertension because we all know that hypertension is a very common topic, a very prevalent disease, and there is lack of blood pressure control that can partially also be due to lack of education to patients. So we realized that ChatGPT 3.5 actually had a very decent accuracy in providing recommendations in accordance with the American ACC AHA guidelines and the, and the European ESC ESH guidelines. The AI had some inaccuracies, but most of the answers out of 35 questions that were asked, 88% of these questions, 31 questions out of 35 were considered accurate and only four were considered inaccurate. So this is a very promising uh, start to the field of patient education, especially in the topic of hypertension. Yeah. And I found it really neat that when you try to simulate your findings that you published in hypertension with chat GPT for hypertension, that it has an improved performance in just a few months. So is this an ongoing improvement that you will see and will patients benefit from this? What is your take on it? Exactly. So what we actually did is we used the same questions and as you said, we asked the same questions after six, seven months and we saw that there was an improvement in the accuracy of answers by the AI model and even the more advanced models like ChatGPT4 in comparison to ChatGPT 3.5 was even more performant. So this tells you that these AI are constantly updated, the input data is changing and hopefully it's changing for the best because we are seeing this improvement and also other publishers on hypertension have also noticed this improvement when it comes to providing recommendations. So this is a very promising topic because when we stay focused on patient education we don't want to give our patients wrong advice or inaccuracies right. so this is a very important point so if I am a patient I want to use uh, the guidelines to be told by the chat GPT platform are we ready for that kind of a patient advice or what's the caveat it's not a clear yes or no answer in my opinion then this is the major part of our talk today, the good and the bad. So we have good things about these AIs. For example, it gives a very uh, a structured answer. It's, it can give an answer in pretty any language. It's free to use by, for most AIs, they are free to use. Uh, most of the questions are accurate as we saw. So these are the good parts of this AI. And this is very promising, but we cannot overlook the bad part. The bad part would be that a patient can't really understand what is inaccurate and what is accurate. So telling our patient this AI has a 90% accuracy rate, there are still 10% of inaccuracies, how the patient would know which part is accurate, which part is not. So this is one of the limitations. Mm -hmm. The second limitation before saying to our patients, go ahead and use it, is the lack of updated data. So we know that ChatGPT, for example, stops at in September 2021, which is arguably two years ago. It's actually two years ago. So there are some new studies that are not going to be included in the recommendation. And medicine is a constantly evolving field, maybe more than any topic. So we need to find models that are actually updated with the latest guidelines before going in and saying to our patients, go ahead and use it. And also the lack of consistency. I, I'm Relief that the answers are becoming accurate with time, but the lack of consistency is also concerning in a way. So maybe an answer that was accurate becomes inaccurate. How can we know that? So it's not a clear-cut answer. We're still in a gray area that we need to explore, but I'm pretty convinced that this is probably the future. Well, you're clearly very excited about yeah, it. So what's going on now? What's next for you? So what's next, in my opinion? First, as physicians, I think we have an ethical duty of evaluating the current present tool. So that's what I'm trying to do with my team at the Cleveland Clinic. We're trying to find out for many medical topics if the AIs can actually provide patients with accurate information. And we've had quite a, quite a good results. They are all published and uh, 
overall, the accuracy of these tools are very good. We tested it on GI problems, on oncology problems, on hypertension, on vascular heart disease, and we've had very promising results. This is from our part as physicians. This is, I think, one of the things we can do to evaluate the tools. But on the other hand, the bigger picture would be to develop AI models that are specifically intended for medical use and for patient education, filled with the most updated guidelines, filled with data, and as we discussed in our, our, our session, validated, completely validated. Today, this is, these are very qualitative studies. I'm convinced that are very important studies because it helps bridge the gap between this black box and what's actually going on. But we need a, ve a way to validate the model as a whole and say, okay, now it's safe for use for the patient. Maybe not for any topic, but for a specific topic, let's say hypertension, like an AI model that is specific for hypertension. And we can safely say to our patient, go ahead, you want more information? Skip Google, go ahead, ask the AI. It's more structured, it's more easy to understand. So this is my point. Well, Dr. Kassab, it was great to listen to you Thank and you very to much. listen to you as a panelist uh, in a very well-attended session. Thank you all. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.